Hey guys, welcome to The Doctor Medic. Today we're gonna do things a little bit different. I've had some people ask me what my thoughts were on this ambulance movie and uh, it seems perfectly fitting for me to do a little review on it and see what's legit and what's real, what's fake and uh, see if we can learn a thing or two about that. So with that, let's get started. And before we get too far into it, it's important to know that uh, EMS has historically been portrayed uh, highly inaccurate in Hollywood, in TV, uh, in the media. Uh, we're all ambulance drivers in some places, and uh, other places might show us to be the biggest superheroes in the world, uh, but they never really seem to get it right. So let's see what this movie does and see what they get right and see what they get wrong. Here we go. I've been told that the opening scene is a little crazy in this movie, so we'll see. As a paramedic, you got to believe that 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 any movie that comes out with superstar uh, actors like like Jake Gyllenhaal and the movie's called Ambulance. In the grand scheme of things, I don't even care if it's legit. It's good for us, and it's probably cool. But we'll see. My first thought when I look at this is obviously they got a call here and they're wearing some pretty cool jackets. It's Los Angeles though. It looks really hot there, but those jackets are pretty cool. I think she just said floor it. I've never heard my partner say floor it. And if you told me to floor it, I probably wouldn't floor it. But she said floor it. I don't know where she's going. She's, go she's going in the back. Now her her jumping in the back that that actually I didn't know where she was going a second ago but that actually could be legit. Sometimes if you have a really serious call that you're going to and you hear it on the radio, uh, it's not uncommon if you have an ambulance that you can actually go to the back like that. Uh, it, I don't think it would be too uncommon to jump back there and maybe get a couple things prepared for that type of call that you might be going on, which in this case apparently is a gnarly vehicle accident. Does it always sound that bad? So the, the first thing that I pick up on here is that obviously she's the paramedic and he must be the EMT or maybe he's just new. Uh, and in the grand scheme of things, he actually is acting like a new EMT or paramedic would. He's talking a lot. He's got a lot to say and he's a little nervous about going to the calls and she's being mean to him. Sounds legit. No matter what, stay focused. So right here, it looks like you got you got two vehicles involved, and obviously this guy on the right in the Infinity uh, has got himself twisted up in this fence a little bit, and so you know you've got firefighters there who are uh, trying to do some extrication and, and uh, making the scene a little bit safer. Uh, and so that, that looks pretty right so far. It definitely is LA with their, um, unique firefighter helmets. So, uh, it looks like she's got to walk up and figure out how many patients she has maybe. I can tell you at first glance, one of the things that really jumps out at me is how uh, she's obviously an experienced paramedic, but she's running around and she's screaming at people. And while she may sound like she's in charge, we don't do that. We really should never be running unless there's some type of safety issue or something like that, or you're running out of the way of a vehicle that's coming at you. But the, you, you wouldn't be running around the car like that, first of all. And the firefighters that she's with, they don't work for her. They're part of the same team. So she wouldn't be screaming at them either uh, to do this or to do that. Uh, things would be a lot more calm, at least externally in real life, and they wouldn't be screaming or running around. 
looks like the firefighters have the, some hydraulic tools uh, in their hands, uh, which is super cool. This is what you guys might know is the jaws of life. Uh, so they're probably going to try to extricate that kid out of the back of that car. Now I need you to do something for me. Can you be brave? Can you do that? I can be brave. All oh, that kid's so cute. I wonder how they got that kid to scream like that. I'd probably scream like that too with a big giant circular K-12 saw thing going in the background. Um, one thing that would probably be different in real life is they would have probably put ear protection on that kid and probably covered her up with a tarp um, uh, to protect her against the sparks and debris and stuff like that. And so it looks like the firefighters had to, had to cut that uh, metal fencing out and obviously they're on the move. So a second ago, I did say about that fire engine being back there, and that actually would be pretty legit because you can see here the guy who has his glove on uh, on top of the cardiac monitor there, that's a firefighter. And so it'd be pretty common for paramedics on scene that if they have a critical patient or they need an extra hand uh, to take one of the firefighters off the engine and have them uh, accompany them and ride in the back of the ambulance. Uh, because as you can see in one of my uh, previous videos, I'll post it up here, I guess. Um, you know, a lot of the firefighters are either EMTs or they may be paramedics themselves. And so they can be very, very helpful in the back of the ambulance. And so that fire truck that the firefighter was on actually would have to meet the ambulance at the hospital to get their firefighter back so that they can go back in service. And so that's actually pretty legit. Uh, I did see that the kid had a non rebreather on and was put on a backboard. Looks like the kid's injury is a penetrating trauma. And the data that we have uh, today, and I know this may sound strange to a lot of you if you're not in the public safety field, uh, but this patient would not be put on a backboard anymore. Um, not only should backboards really never be used anymore for purposes of immobilization and splinting, they certainly should never be used in penetrating trauma. Uh, there's all kinds of research out there that has shown that backboards actually, not only do they not help people, but they actually end up making things worse and uh, uh, causing more problems, especially in penetrating trauma. Uh, but let's see. So that's a cardiac monitor there that the uh, firefighter has his hands on. That's a Life Pack 15, and that's very common and very uh, a current um, currently used by thousands of fire trucks and ambulances across the country. So that seems pretty legit. Good job. 30 seconds out from Children's. Okay, so it is probably true that the, there would be a trauma team waiting and this kid probably does need blood. The one thing that probably, again, the, 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 that the data has shown us uh, over the last 20 years is that this kid probably would not need a lot of fluids. Uh, we found that giving a lot of IV fluids to your hemorrhagic uh, um, uh, shock patients, uh, especially in trauma, uh, for a multitude of reasons, is actually uh, not good for the patient in most cases. Uh, it can build up too much pressure for clots. It can uh, dilute the oxygen-carrying capability of somebody's blood, uh, and it can actually lower their core temperature, with then, which then also makes um, perfusion and oxygenation uh, somewhat of an issue. So uh, really, we don't blast people with IV fluids in um, traumatic bleeding anymore like we used to. Um, maybe a little bit, but not two liters of fluid and, and, and not for this kid. Okay. It looks like there's a physician and a couple of nurses who have met outside. I mean, it's actually pretty legit to see that. Um, and you might be wondering, uh, it looks right here like the, the patient has a, um, ha has that, uh, that fencing rod still sticking out of her belly. And it looks like it's kind of secured with a bulky dressing of, of some sort. And that's actually true. You would not pull that out. Uh, especially something of that size. Uh, it very well could be going through an artery um, inside, that, inside that kid's belly, but what it also very well may be doing is 
uh, tamponading or putting pressure on an artery that's cut and keeping it from bleeding. Uh, and so if you pull it out, you might actually make things a lot worse. And now you have some uncontrollable bleeding. So it's actually good that they left it in. Uh, really, the rest of the clothes of this kid should be cut off. Any major trauma kid that's coming into the ER would um, be what we call trauma naked. Uh, and so that's mainly because we don't want to miss any injuries that would be on this call. Uh, but it is Hollywood and it is a kid. So I can imagine why they didn't want to uh, make her naked there on the on the screen. You all right? Is, that, is this what your first time was like? I'm starving. I know a good enchilada place. Want to go? Enchiladas. You're going to love it. I'm going to throw up. We've got bark bags. So obviously you see here that she's a seasoned paramedic and they're trying to tell you that this is a, she's just blowing this off. And I can tell you that, that, that in my experience, uh, that very well could be legit the way that she's acting right there. But by all means, it, 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 that's obviously a problem with all public safety is, is, is that uh, paramedics and firefighters and cops might be a little numb to the trauma. So that was Tra that was a traumatic event. Seemed like she did a good job, but it'd be pretty legit for her to blow it off like that and say, okay, what's for lunch? Let's go eat. Pretty, pretty common, uh, pretty accurate there. Oh man, she's drinking a Heine. Really? You're going to be on the job? Because we're a little traumatized after all. <laughs> zero alcohol, dude. Oh. oh, well, she said it's zero alcohol. However, it is not uncommon. Well, I shouldn't say that it's not uncommon. It is uncommon. But there are ambulance services and there are fire services in the United States that will allow their paramedics and firefighters to drink on duty. There's documentation out there that shows that some fire departments might allow one drink uh, per shift or two drinks per shift. And then there's other places that, that might say, well, you can have alcohol on shift, you just can't have a blood alcohol level of above 0 0.04. It actually does, it does exist. And uh, that's a whole topic for a whole other d discussion, but it's pretty rare. It is uncommon for that to happen. Um, but apparently hers is a non-alcoholic. Uh, uh, the, the, the visual uh, the visual of that probably doesn't look very good. So there's probably rules at these places. I don't know if you can really go out and drink in public. Uh, if, if you're at one of those places that allows the drinking, uh, if you work at one of those agencies, definitely give me a comment below because I would want to know at the agencies that do allow you to have a couple drinks on duty, are you allowed to do it in public? I don't know. That's from this batch. Little girl from earlier, Lindsay. She's going to make it. No, Scott, I don't want to know. That's why I want to do this job. Scott, know? Scott, I'm going to give you some advice because you're new and you talk too much. Yeah, I do. It's just a job, nothing else. You pick him up, drop him, forget it. Huh. I'm surprised she didn't say you call we haul because that's what a lot of paramedics in the United States say. Uh, because we're obligated to transport patients um, if, if, if they want to go. But, man, this dude is acting exactly like a new person would. Uh, he's being polite and he's being respectful, but he's kind of annoying his partner. Uh, and it looks like she's kind of set some ground rules which is or set some expectations. Um, maybe she's a little mean. That's not really good. But it does happen. All right, you get one question a day and that's it. Boyfriend. Do you have one? Of course you can ask that. Yes, I have a boyfriend. He's a doctor at Mount Sinai. Of course he's a doctor at Mount Sinai. Never heard of paramedics dating doctors or anything like that, or paramedics dating paramedics or nurses and paramedics. It's weird how that happens. Hmm. I'd say that's pretty legit, though. Hey, we're on the go. Let's go. Move, no, Scott. Move. She's running again. Lots of running. What a coordinated skid move. Not the teddy bear. Oh man, that's tasty. What did you do to my legs? You wanna ask her out? Zach! Dude's dying and he thinks the way to bring him back is to talk about the hot girl he's trying to ask out. Probably bring me back. Makes sense. Shot in the leg! 
There she is running again. Any other gun wounds? Uh, Are you sure? I don't know. No exit. Probably got the fever. So it looks like she's uh, she's doing what she should be doing. Is she is uh, um, recognizing that this guy is not dead yet, and that he's awake, and that he's got uh, some type of uncontrollable bleeding coming from his left leg, and um, going straight to a tourniquet, and that looks like a cat tourniquet, which is a brand name, um, but it's an orange one. And I'm pretty sure that the orange ones are marked for training purposes only, and an actual cat tourniquet, they would all be black. Uh, but she's got an orange one, high visibility, but I think it's a training one. Shed me light, shed me light. Over here. What's his name? It's Zach. Okay, give me this, give me this. And for all you EMTs and paramedics out there, she put that thing high and tight, which is right where it's supposed to be. Not two inches above the wound, high and tight every time. Zach, Zach, buddy, come to me. Zach, hey, buddy, come to me. Let's carry him up. Oh. I've done a lot of things to try to stimulate patients, but I've never hit them and slapped them. Maybe I've wanted to, but I've never hit them and slapped them. Uh, there's other ways to try to arouse them and make, see, see, see whether or not they're awake, but it was a little aggressive with the, with the slap in there. One, two, three, go. Clear. So they got to take this cop to the hospital and he's armed. Well, what do we do when we have law enforcement uh, or really anybody who is being transported in the ambulance who has a firearm on them? Well, if they're awake and alert and they're allowed to have that firearm and uh, maybe they've just got a minor injury, uh, we're going to keep the firearm on them. Uh, but if it's a situation like this, that firearm does need to be secured. Sometimes you could put it underneath him like that, but you would either ask this other officer here to take the firearm uh, and he would secure it. Uh, and if you didn't have another officer there, uh, a lot of paramedics are pretty good with guns. Um, that gun would need to have the magazine removed and the, the, the round removed from the chamber. Uh, and you can secure it in a safe. Every ambulance is going to have a safe where they control or where they store their controlled substances like morphine and fentanyl and stuff like that. Uh, and you can put it in there. Uh, but you're, I can't imagine that you'd take a hot, hot firearm and just sit it underneath the, the cop who's about to die. Seems legit so far. She's got him on oxygen. Uh, she's uh, got him on a non-rebreather mask that's called, and they're going to the hospital quickly like they should. Sounds legit. He's hypotensive. That means his blood pressure is low, and he's tachycardic. That means that his heart rate is high, and these are signs of, uh, of shock, uh, and it's a sign that um, he's losing a lot of blood and his, his body's struggling to compensate for all that lost blood. So that makes sense. Get out now. Yeah, there's a guy with a big fucking gun pointed at me right now. Of course you get out what? now. Well, get the paramedic jacket you drive. He's not a paramedic, he's an EMT. Just make sure everybody's aware of that. Hey, 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 buddy. What happened? Hey, what happened? Where's the ambulance? What happened? Huh? He hit me in the face with a gun. That's what happened. It's my first day. Damn. Ooh, helicopters. I like helicopters. That's an A-Star 350. I think there's two of them in this movie. Oh, man, that sucks. Take a look at her right glove there. It's covered in blood. That looks pretty legit. It looks pretty legit. Keep paying attention to that glove, though. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't know. Something happened to her glove all of a sudden. Uh, obviously, that was a, a, a goof on the it, it, on the director's part there. But nonetheless, uh, a broken glove like that happens all the time, and that is very, very common uh, to see that. And then you've got blood and guts and poop all over your hands. Uh, but it wasn't broken a second ago. That's weird. Hey, wake up, wake up. Hey, hey. Come on, Cam. Let's go. It's not cut anymore, is it? Fuck you. 
Yeah. Thank you. So she just said he's in VFib. And you might be wondering why she just hit him. But that's actually something that can happen. It's, it's called a precordial thump. If somebody's in pulseless VTAC or ventricular fibrillation, which are two rhythms that would actually get shocked by a, by a defibrillator or an AED, uh, there actually um, has been some documented cases that if somebody, uh, you know, thumps them hard enough on the chest that it can uh, trigger a, a depolarization of a certain cardiac cell to kind of um, get their get their heart rhythm back into what we call like a normal sinus rhythm of some sort. Uh, I've never had it work, uh, but it's still an accepted use, and that, I think that's what she did. I don't think she was mad. I think she precordial thumped him to try to fix his heart because she said he's in V-fib. I don't know what happened. I just started beefing. He's about to die. It's cash! Word to the wise. If you're doing CPR on somebody... They're already dead. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing CPR. You're doing CPR because their heart stopped. So they're already dead. I have got to figure out how to lock up the rear tires and fishtail like that in an ambulance. That's pretty cool. So it looks like she's preparing a what's called a pre-filled syringe of epinephrine, otherwise known as adrenaline. Um, and so that's, that's accurate. You gotta, you gotta put those two things together like that and, and screw them together. And then you push it through an IV and you do that every five minutes when somebody's dead. Pretty legit. Woo! Buppy! In case, in case you're wondering about Falk EMS, that actually is a real ambulance service. Uh, they are a massive organization that actually uh, does international um, across uh, several different countries. But they're actually really big in Southern California and even some parts of Northern California. Um, but that's a, they're, they're an actual EMS service, and um, they're, they're, they're pretty legit. How'd they get that shot? That was cool. Oh man, this whole time she'd been doing CPR back still? Oh my god, she's got to be wore out. Daddy! Get your hands back here. I need your help. I need more hands. You need to help me. You're going to have a cop dead any minute now. You're going to prison for the rest of your fucking life. Yeah, because if the cop dies, that's the difference between him going to prison for the rest of his life is this one cop, not the 75 other cops in the bank robbery and the all that stuff. So she's been doing CPR this whole time, and it, it, it sounds like he's still in V-fib. And your number one priority with somebody who's in V-fib is to shock and defibrillate them as soon as possible. Um, so you really wouldn't be giving epinephrine before you did that. That probably would have been the first thing she reached for after she thumped his ass uh, was the uh, uh, defibrillation pads. But now she's asking Jake to, to get him. One is a little hard. I've worked a thousand codes in my life and every single time I have to look at those stupid little pictures on the paths to make sure I put them in the right spot. Don't feel bad, Daniel. She told him to charge it to 300, which you could do. It normally, it's not a normal place to start. You would normally start at 200 and then do 300 and then 360, or you would just start at 360, or you would just do 200 over and over again, but you normally wouldn't start at 300. Maybe she's already shocked him once, I don't know. But that is definitely ventricular fibrillation on the screen. That's definitely a LifePak 15 monitor, and uh, they got good battery life up there too, so that's good. So he hit the shock button, but it's charging. So it actually would have hit the, the button above it to actually charge it. So he's actually going to hit that big red button is the shock button, like shock. Uh, but he, he should be hitting the charge button. And the movie makes it sound like he does hit the charge button because you hear it charging up. You wouldn't, the, the, the red button is the actual shock button. Whoa, shit! 
When you defibrillate people, they really do jump out of the bed like that. It's legit. It's a little scary, but it happens. We just sapped him. We did that shock shit. We did that shock shit. Oh my God, that's so cool. That helicopter flying five feet off the ground like that. If you would have cut his clothes off like you were supposed to with that girl at the beginning, you'd see where the blood was coming from. Just kidding. She's doing a great job. But she should have cut his clothes off. He doesn't need more blood. He needs a doctor that knows what he's doing to open him up. Stop. That's 100% right. In trauma, what does a patient need? They need an OR. They need a surgeon. They need literally need somebody to cut them open and stop the bleeding. That is the entire purpose of the trauma system in the United States. You're an EMT. Yeah. She's not an EMT. She's a paramedic. She would have corrected him. Hang on. What's up, Colin? Oh, man. The trauma doctors are on the golf course. Never heard of that before. Dr. Resnick and Dr. Farsi. We're trauma surgeons. Surgeons are walking you through an operation to remove the bullet. I'm not a surgeon. I never will be. But I don't understand what the issue is with constantly in the movies having to remove the bullet. Like somehow the bullet being in there is what's killing them. It's not. There's some people who leave the bullet in. What's killing them is all the blood vessels that the bullet ripped apart. That's what needs to be fixed, not getting the bullet out. But whatever, let's get the bullet out. And I'm thinking there's internal bleeding. She's thinking there's internal bleeding. Wow. She's, he's got internal bleeding. Sir, did you shoot him with an AR or with a handgun? So it's a good question. He said, did you shoot him with an AR or with a handgun? It's not really the gun that matters, but it's the fact that an AR shoots a, a 5.56 five, probably, and a handgun probably is not shooting that. Uh, so you, if you assume a handgun is a 380 or a 9 millimeter or a 40 caliber or something like that, um, those those are deadly rounds, but they don't have the velocity that a, that a 5.56 five, round coming from an AR would. And so that does tell a trauma doctor and it should tell a paramedic really how much internal damage is there's going to be in there, right? Uh, the force of any moving object is dependent upon the, the speed uh, as well as the mass of that object. Uh, but speed is, is um, exponential. And so the faster something's going, uh, the more damage it's going to cause. And so that's why he's asking, was it a handgun or an AR-15? Then take the scissors and you need to open him up on the skin. Well, those aren't scissors. That's a scalpel. Oh, oh, those are some scissors. Those looks like some. Uh, those look like the famous Leatherman ones that everybody buys and loses. Uh, but that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm cutting, cutting skin. Woo! Skin is open. Ben, you and your criminal friend right there, put both of your hands in the wound. Ow! Man, Sounds like it's gonna hurt. Heart rate's down at forty. That looks like a sinus rhythm at 40. And if you have a trauma patient at this stage in the game who's Brady down to 40 beats a minute, that dude ain't going to make it. He's uh, he, he, he ain't going to make it. But it's a movie. Let's see what happens. Oh, no. Oh! He knocked him out. That burst. I like the idea, but that hair clip is not going to secure that artery. But I like the idea. Does your wife know you're on banks? Mm. Why are you asking? Situational awareness. Oh my God. Aiza, situational awareness. <laughs> Talk dirty to me, girl. Woo! You got addicted to speed. Of course you did. Addicted to speed. Oh, yeah. Let's get it. I just want to know if there is a single movie in the history of time where there's been a car chase in Los Angeles where they did not end up in the Los Angeles River. Oh, so cool. 
Oh man, there's two of them. There's got to be a third one, right? Because they're the ones filming. I did watch a little snippet on one of the pilots who, uh, or maybe somebody who was filming or one of the pilots who's flying one of these. And they said the most difficult part about this scene was just the, the helicopter that was in the rear uh, trying to avoid the, the water spray um, of the helicopter in, uh, in front of it or even coming from the ambulance. But nonetheless, this is a legit scene, man. They really filmed this with the two helicopters. Super cool. Super cool. <laughs> That's cool. Why is this cop back here driving the wrong way? Don't he know that the party's going the other way? He's lost. Cops. Was your, was your hand in my stomach? Like way in. Like way in. I just want to be able to say this. My hand was in your stomach. Or in your abdomen, whatever. Oh man, you shot the wrong dude. Ugh. And now she's doing CPR on the other dude. That's no good. Y'all should know that when somebody codes or somebody dies or their heart rate actually stops from trauma, there's a less than 1% chance of survival. Um, and so it's because they've lost blood. It's because that's what they need. Remember we said that, that they need to go to an OR for a surgeon to be able to cut them open. Uh, giving them drugs and intubating them and doing all this stuff, it really doesn't do anything for them, really, because what they need is a surgeon. You need to get them to a surgeon before they die. Oh man, there's some damn pads again. Look at her, she put them on pretty quick though. Better than I could do. He's not your responsibility, he's a criminal, right? You, you see in this situation right here, I know it might feel good to say that, oh, well, he's a bad guy and the cops are just gonna be dicks and leave him there to die and delay him getting in the hospital. I mean, he's outside the hospital, any physician or paramedic you know, has an, has an oath. And just because the guy's a criminal doesn't mean uh, that they're going to withhold care uh, or purposely let him die. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Every crime that you've ever seen on TV, every bad thing that you've ever seen on TV, if the guy, if the guy is alive and he didn't get shot by the cops or kill himself, some paramedic took him to the hospital and some doctor and nurse took care of him. Uh, and they, are going to do so to the best of their ability because it's, it's not a paramedic's job. It's not a doctor's job to, to, to determine uh, what, what level of care somebody gets. Am I saying that that's never happened? I'm not going to say that's never happened because it probably has, but it's just not what we do. We take care of the patients and they would do a good job. I do kind of like this. I'm a sucker for it. I'm a little teary eyed right now. One of the biggest difficulties about being a paramedic is that we don't really know, we don't really have a system set up to know too much about whether or not our patients uh, turned out okay, especially trauma patients. And especially if we don't work for that hospital, it's really hard. And so people actually have to break the rules to help us. And you saw that she was going through the paperwork to find out where this kid was and the nurse was about to yell at her and um, realized who she was and then let her. I don't know if they'd let her go through the paperwork, but by all means, it's pretty common for hospitals to, uh, especially if you know somebody there, to kind of let the paramedic uh, know uh, from an educational standpoint, how, how did your patient turn out? And uh, did you do the right thing or did you not? The problem is, is it's all kind of unofficial uh, and there really should be a better system so that they know whether or not what they did turned out well. But I do like the fact that, again, I'm a little bit emotional about it. I do like the fact that, you know, something about this crappy day of hers made her want to go back and uh, see how that patient turned out. Because I think every paramedic's been there and they, they, they've got to stick to their emotions because uh, too often they, they say, oh, you got to you got to put it behind you or something like that. Or it's just a job. And um, it is a job. But there's a lot of emotion attached to it. And so I kind of like the fact, I know it's cheesy, shut up. I like the fact that she come back and uh, check out how that kid's doing. Well, that's the end of the film. Overall, like what's my big take on it? I think it was pretty good. 
I think uh, uh, the the, the storyline of the of the bank robbery was kind of stupid, um, but the shootout was good. And uh, you know, whoever they had for um, uh, medical uh, uh, consultants on this on this movie, they actually did a pretty good job. I mean, you'd really have to pick this thing apart to be able to say, "Oh, well, she did that wrong," or "or this isn't legit." I mean, they used pretty real ambulance. They used real equipment. Uh, they act and said a lot, uh, like a lot of the things that we really do. And overall, I think it's pretty, pretty good portrayal of, of, of what paramedics um, might do here, here in the United States. Is it dramatized? Yes, it's pretty, it's pretty dramatized. And uh, but it's not. Most of it was not really outside the realm of reality, uh, except, you know, her, you know, scooping that dude's spleen out and then squashing it like a bug in her hand that probably really wouldn't happen but yeah but either way uh it, it, w let me know in the comments below whether or not you agree or disagree with anything or maybe you point out something that i might have missed or maybe i got it wrong uh, but i really would love to hear what you have to say uh, either way i hope you all have a beautiful day and we'll get you at the next episode see ya